Let's get started. First, we need to get data on some stocks, and for this video, I suggest we focus on Helsinki Stock Exchange, and so I'm taking the Helsinki uh, Market Index and uh, Fortum and Finair stocks. Well, my first intuition was uh, to get uh, data directly from here by Power Query from a web, and uh, here you see I got the data from uh, January 1st, 2017 uh, to November 12th. Uh, 2018, but uh, when I have built the query for that, uh, here it is already uh, merged. Uh, let's see it to the end. It only starts in June 2018. Why it only actually downloaded 100 rows? Well, I did a little research. Apparently, it's not a limitation of Power Query, but um, it's a limitation set by Yahoo Finance. You cannot get more than 100 rows. From here. I also checked some other websites and the same problem. You cannot get data at all without some premium subscription or you can only get some limited data. But we can go around that. We can always download uh, CSV files and so we can build query from the file as we did for consolidation. But uh, here there will be a little bit of difference so uh, let's do it together. I have here already downloaded three files I want, uh, uh, the same uh, date range. Uh, it's uh, Helsinki Index, Finair, and Fortum. So let's build a query for that. Data, get data from file, from folder. I'm copying the path of that folder. Here it finds the uh, three files, transform data. And now, similar as before, we have some information about uh, those files. All the content is here, and if we follow the previous logic, let's delete everything else, remove all other columns, and here would be the combining files, expanding all the what is inside, without any magic. And uh, here would be the preview, what we get. Let's see what we get. Okay, we have all our data here. And if we scroll down, yes, everything seemingly been here. But the problem is that the Power Query actually just put together all those files, and we don't know which prices are for which stock. So let's go back in here, in here, still in here. And uh, this one actually we need, so uh, because it's table inside that we want to have. But then uh, removed other columns, we don't want this to be there. And uh, choose columns, we want actually name back. Okay. Can we go here now? Yes, and uh, what we have, we have uh, tables with our data from what Power Query did when we expanded the content, and now we have also our names. So let's delete this one, we don't need that anymore. And let's try expanding this now. Yes, we want... Actually, we don't need everything. We need only date, and let's take adjusted close. And uh, uh, we don't need to use uh, uh, original column name as prefix. Okay. Fantastic. So we got our prices, we got the dates, and we got the names. And let's see that we have actually some other names too. Yes, now it's four from here. Amazing. And again, uh, don't forget to format the uh, data type, so we need to replace dots with commas. Yep, and detect data type. Yeah, it's automatically detected. Now we can load it. Here it is. Now, for us to have it in a better format, let's get a pivot table in here. To a new workbook or worksheet, it's okay. And here we don't need queries anymore. Uh, name would be in columns, date in rows, and the price in here. So um, we are using sum here by default, but is it what we need? Let's check if we count. Yes, everywhere we have just ones, except the grand total clearly. 
So if we use sum, it practically gets our original values. It's what we want. Okay, good. And uh, by the way, here in design of the pivot table, if we choose report layout show in tabular form, it actually shows the uh, names, the titles of the of the columns. But what we don't need, we don't need grand totals in here, so let's get grand totals off for both rows and columns. Perfect. And now we got the data in the way we want it to be, and it's still relatively easy to update, so we just get the CSV file.